Hey guys, it's Hannah Hearts Book 6, and today I'm going to talk about books that I read in May. And the first graphic novel, I actually don't have volume 2 with me, but volume 3 is standing in as its counterpart. And the art's different. I'm a little sad. I haven't read this one yet, but I did read volume 2, Friendship to the Max, and I loved it. I thought it was so fun and so, like, just really cute, and I really loved the friendship aspect to it. Obviously, it's called Friendship to the Max, so, I mean, obviously a lot of friendship's going to happen. And I really liked how there was a lot of build-up. I really liked the twist of the, um, like, gods and goddesses and stuff. That might be a spoiler, so sorry. But, I mean, it's a graphic novel. But, anyway, um, so I really liked that portion and also two of the characters in this that were in the first volume, they were really flirty in the first volume, and in the second volume their relationship blooms a little bit more, and I really liked that, and I liked the part of the anagrams, I think that was mostly in the first volume, but the second volume came to life, and Jen, oh my gosh, I love Jen, if you... I haven't posted any of the videos that I filmed, so sorry, but basically I read volume one and I freaking love Jen. Jen, the camp counselor, is literally my spirit animal. She's so funny and in this book she kind of saves the day in like a funny way and I just, I loved it so much. Jen forever. I love all the girls. Um, they're so fun. The next book I read was The Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend by Katarina Bilvald. And actually this is my second time filming this and I couldn't really get my words together for that review. So I'm just gonna read you what I said on Goodreads and it really is going to guide my review. So basically I gave this book three stars mostly because I was in a slump while reading it and I had to like force myself to finish this book and motivate myself to finish it because I was not getting a lot of motivation through the actual content of the book, but I will read you my Goodreads review. So, I said, I'm so conflicted on my rating for this book, as I just said. I loved the characters and the storyline, but for some reason I just was not motivated to pick up this book. I think it may be because I've read so many okay books in the past month that I really am feeling slumpy. I want to find a book that I seriously can't but put down because I miss that feeling so much. That aside, I loved the characters. Okay. So before I read the rest of it, I'm going to tell you basically what the story is about, or the build-up to the story. There's this girl named Sarah, and she lives in Sweden, and we're writing letters to Amy Harris, um, who lives in Broken Wall, Iowa, and basically they've been pen pals for the past two years, and they make a plan that in August of this current year that she is going to come visit Amy for a month in Broken Wheel and like meet all the people that she talks that Amy talks about in the letters at the beginning of the month when Sarah is supposed to stay in Iowa. So she is in Hope, Iowa when, when we first find her and she's at the train station where her and Amy were supposed to meet like and she's been waiting for over an hour and Amy's not showing. So basically this guy who lives in Hope gives her a ride to Broken Wheel and he's like chastising her the whole time. He's like why did you come all the way from Sweden to go to this podunk town, Broken Wheel, and like nobody cares about it. And so she gets there and she figures out from this lady named Grace, who works at the restaurant, that Amy died. And she died about a few weeks ago. And basically they didn't know how to contact her. So basically she gets there to this town. She's halfway across the world and finds out that the person she was supposed to stay with, what, died. And so they want her to live in the house and she ends up staying and a lot of different stuff happens and she and Sarah loves books and that was her, her and Amy's main connection is that they loved books and so basically it just goes from there and them talking about books but nobody else in the town loves the books so the title's kind of misleading but anyway. That aside, I loved the characters. I loved Grace because she talked about characters from books like they were real, and I related to that on another level. Throughout the story, people start to fall in love with books, and Grace, the lady who owns the restaurant, um, Sarah recommends her to read Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, and Grace literally talks about one of the main characters from that book 
like she is a real person and refers to her and, and is like, well, this lady wouldn't do this. And it's so funny because I literally related to that because I'm like, man, I do that sometimes where I'm like, man, like Lara Jean, she really wouldn't do that. But then I liked Sarah because she could get lost in a book. Sarah, I totally related to her. There's literally a scene in the book where she's reading for three or four straight hours and everybody in the town is lined up outside a window watching her read. It's so funny. And she doesn't notice them. And then I liked Tom because he reminded me of my own non-reader husband. I love the addition of Amy's letters because it really established her connection with Sarah and eventually Sarah's love for Broken Wheel. I really liked how they involved her letters because otherwise you wouldn't really know that much about Amy because when you start off the story she's already died. So it was really fun to know about her um, like love for Broken Wheel and the people in it. So lastly I loved George because he was a super great guy and I'm so glad he got the girl in the end even that, if that girl was just his long lost daughter. And George is basically like this drunk or like this former drunk in the town and he accepts Sarah with open arms and loves her and it's just I mean I really I liked the book and I think from reading this review and remembering how I read it I like it a little bit more so I think I probably would change my reading to a 3.5 but I think at the time that I finished it I just was feeling really down about myself and my reading so basically readers of Broken Will recommend I would recommend you read it I mean it's if you love books and you love stories about people who love books then you will really like that book so the next one that I have to talk about or is actually a trilogy so we have burn for burn fire with fire and ashes to ashes all by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian and actually I'll break down my ratings for them so burn for burn gets four stars probably four and a half this book gets five stars because that twist though was ridiculous <laughs> then we have ashes to ashes and i gave this four stars it was honestly a little bit displaying i talked about that in my instagram post so you can go ahead and read that but i'm mostly just going to talk about the first book because if i talked about the other two books then it'd be spoilers it's in a it's a revenge story so they come together and they each have somebody that they want to get revenge on. Lilia wants to get revenge on Alex. Kat wants to get revenge on Rennie, who is actually her former best friend, but Lilia's current best friend. Um, they all were friends like a long time ago. And then Mary wants to get revenge on this guy named Reeve, who bullied her in seventh grade. And basically, crap goes down from there. The revenge stuff that they do in this book is crazy like I mean the, the, the stuff they do to like two of the characters is crazy like a little bit like not that bad but the other one like it goes really hardcore and there's a like there's a like twist at the end of this book and you're like what the heck and so it kind of introduces this like paranormal element but Oh my gosh, it's crazy. And then, without spoiling, fire with fire. Um, so one character in this book I was suspicious of the whole time because I was reading some Goodreads reviews and I was trying not to be spoiled but also kind of getting spoiled in the end. But basically, they were talking about how, um, like, this one character, they said something about this one character. And I remember being in the middle of reading Burn for Burn and be like, oh my gosh, this character is blah, blah, blah. And if you've read this series, you totally know what I mean. But in the middle of this book, or at the end of this book, you find out what that twist is. And I actually did predict the twist, but I could not explain how it was happening. So I still really enjoyed this book, even though I predicted the really big twist of this series. Mostly because I saw a little bit of a spoiler, but not a huge one. So, I also, this book is like 517 pages, and I read it in like two days. I read all these books within a week. But yes, Fire with Fire basically continues on that revenge story. And what is 
the aftermath of the activities in Burn for Burn. And then Ashes to Ashes is the sequel. And basically, beginning of this book, somebody has died. And there's a lot more revenge to come. And this is the finale. And it kind of ended, I felt like it was rushed. And looking at other Goodreads reviews, that a lot of other people said it was rushed too. So, yeah, I, I wasn't in love with Ashes to Ashes. I gave it four stars, but I think it would be more like 3.5 stars if we're being really technical. So, definitely my favorite book in the series was Fire with Fire. But I do credit Jenny Han for getting me out of really reading slump. You rock, girl. You write great books. And, yeah, I kind of wish they were all this long because... They were just so interesting and so compulsively readable as all Jenny Han books are. And then the last book that I read, or comic compilation, I think, is Big Mushy Happy Lump. And this is by Sarah Anderson and it's a Sarah Scribbles collection. Also, these covers are so fun because they have like velvety stuff. So it's really soft. You can't feel it. But it's so fun. And I read the... Um, first one of this last year and it was adulthood is a myth and this one was really funny I mean it, they're all really relatable like I really liked because she talked a lot about her anxiety in this one and it was a lot more like in depth of like her own life and how her own life um you know shapes her comics and things so I thought that was really fun she talks about a lot about periods, and it's so funny. It's definitely girl-centered, but I really loved it. Big Mushy Happy Lump. I gave this three stars because it's just like, I mean, it's like a bunch of comics. Like, it's not like the next, like, it's not like a graphic novel or something. So they're all separate stories, but it was really fun. So three stars, four books so far, and one graphic novel and one comic collection. So yeah, I think I'm doing pretty good. But yeah, that is a wrap up for this round so if i read any more books they'll be right there okay seriously bye guys